uh, installing some uh, an enhancement kit, a couple of cables on the optical control electronics uh, device inside base C, uh, which is uh, located where Steve Smith is, the free-floating astronaut right now, is a task that's budgeted for about a half an hour or so. It will require the opening of that door, which has three, uh, three bolts, and uh, John Grunsfeld will use a power tool to release those bolts, and then uh, Steve Smith will perform the task. And once that's completed, they'll take uh, the usual close-out photos, and then the door will be closed and uh, latched once again with the three bolts being uh, driven back into position uh, again by John Grunsfeld. My visor of the connector tool. You got it? Yep. Okay, if you can push the door open, come and open. And now the battery louvers are below me. Grunsfeld tightening the connection uh, on the optical control electronics uh, unit. This is a very uh, good example of uh, the requirement for tethers on every piece of equipment that the astronauts use outside. As you can see, uh, clearly a tether attached to the end of that uh, piece of equipment. And this is Mission Control Houston, uh, close-up view, looking straight over the shoulder, the right shoulder of John Grunsfeld as he uh, works on the uh, change-out of the single S-band single-access transmitter, one of the two transmitters on board the uh, Hubble Space Telescope. Copy uh, P4. And Steve, can you tell us whether you're tethered to the handrail at this time? I'm tethered to the arm still. Going for P5. So 
This is a, uh, a very good view of the cables that John Grunsfeld is working with and the size of those cables. They're a bit smaller than the standard coaxial cable that you hook to the back of your television set, but the connector itself is uh, essentially the same. It uh, requires uh, a tool to loosen those connectors, and that's what he's doing at this time, is disconnecting uh, those cables from the uh, failed transmitter, which is located on the door of Bay 5. Again, the uh, uh, midway up the telescope on the left side as you're looking from the crew compartment. On uh, P5, the RTW is interfering with the ratcheting. Okay, ship some of it away. Uh, let them do that, I'll just turn it manually. Okay? Uh, we copy, John. Uh, okay, yeah. And now we see uh, John Grunsfeld using a uh, pistol grip tool, which is basically a power ratchet tool. And uh, what he's doing now is to basically breaking the uh, torque on eight bolts that are holding the uh, single access transmitter to the wall of the uh, work site. saw just seconds ago the shuttle moved into sun, sunrise and uh, Grunsfeld uh, quickly putting his visor down. Again, there are eight bolts that are holding the uh, transmitter to the wall of the work site and uh, all he's doing on the first go round with the pistol grip tool is to break the torque and that'll be a one turn for each of the eight bolts. The uh, reason for that is, is these bolts are non-captive, meaning that he does not want to remove them completely with this tool. There's a special tool that he will use after he has loosened these uh, bolts that actually, uh, when it does remove them, it, it automatically captures the bolts and then he'll place them in a uh, a little small canister that actually retains those bolts. One turn on the lower right. So I've got one turn on all of those. Three. And we go four turns, Michael. Oh, sorry, quad. Houston, color printer on now, please. Return. 
And John Grunsfeld now using this unique tool to remove each one of the bolts. Again, these are non-captive bolts, so he's, this tool was specially designed so that uh, when he removed the bolts, it actually captured the bolts, and then he will then attach them to that blue. Um, basically, it's a small blue bolt caddy that he attached to the transmitter. It has eight locations, one for each of these small uh, screws or small bolts that he's removing with this tool. And again, as he turns them and removes these bolts, they remain captive inside the tool until he stows them on that small blue caddy, which is uh, known as a fastener retention bracket, affectionately known by its acronym of FRB. Uh, you'll hear, you'll hear uh, some air-to-ground conversation related to it as FRB. It's in the FRB.
another corner bolt. Two latches. Welcome. Okay, you want some fun? Take me to my left, please. See you left. And there's the old uh, transmitter now removed from its uh, uh, location on the wall of the uh, Bay 5 uh, work site. Houston, just checking to see if you have message 48 Bravo. transmitter. A much easier task to reinstall a new unit than the old since the old was not necessarily designed to be uh, replaced by Spacewalk. Uh, evidenced by the very small screws that he had to be very careful in um, demating or unscrewing from the old unit and uh, carefully uh, holding on to those in a uh, special tool caddy, a special fastener device. But this new unit was designed on the ground to uh, be EVA friendly with those uh, wing nuts. And so he was able to attach the new unit uh, quite easily. And now he's simply tightening seven of these uh, wing nuts to uh, make a firm connection of the new unit to the wall, side wall of the uh, work site, Bay 5 of the Hubble Space Telescope. This is a very nice view over uh, John Grunsfeld's right shoulder of the pistol grip tool to show a good, uh, a good method for showing how slowly it turns. And he counts every time it makes one revolution. There's a very precise number of turns that's expected to uh, ensure that these new bolts are tightened properly and securely. Once he's completed uh, with all seven of these, they'll move on to making the connections with the uh, coaxial cables that he uh, demated from the old unit. The only difference is there are some jumpers uh, so that uh, he can actually attach them more easily so that he's not so close to the side wall of the uh, work site as he was in removing the uh, coaxial cables from the other unit.
And John Grunsfeld on the end of the robotic arm holding the old mechanical tape recorder awaiting the arrival of Steve Smith with the uh, replacement unit, the new solid state recorder, which uh, has no mechanically uh, moving parts, thus it uh, has a very low failure rate. It actually can uh, detect and correct and uh, report any random areas in its own memory. John Grunsfeld now has the uh, new solid state recorder, a 25 pound piece of equipment, and he's now uh, being maneuvered back up to the work site by uh, Jean Francois Clairvoy operating the shuttle's mechanical or robotic arm. And Steve, this time you're going to close three latches. Okay. Steve Smith will. Uh, load the old mechanical tape recorder into the protective enclosure as part of the orbital replacement unit carrier. And uh, as we heard Mike Fole uh, uh, telling him to make sure he closes all three latches on that protective enclosure. Did you have good visibility on the solar rays on front spot? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. I still feel busy. Okay, thank you. Have a... Uh Read up of a change when you get ready for the uh, uh, the patch wires, but for now, just count on doing nine and ten. Okay. A further recommendation. We copy just nine and ten. Uh, good copy, Mike. And uh, one further recommendation is to uh, do not do the MFR swap, just to save a little time. If you concur. And Houston, um, I would really like to have John um, get a rest from his hands and uh, put Steve in the MFR. And that. Uh, Discovery, uh, we, we, I concur. and we concur with you. You've got the best uh, view of things. It's typical now with the new unit installed. The uh, crew members are providing a uh, close-up view of that new tape recorder in place to uh, provide the Hubble project with uh, basically some close-out videotape of uh, the new unit installed and the connections as they were mated. And the next step will be to close the door on that uh, bay, bay number five. Uh, close the latches. It takes six latches, uh, bolts to close the, the uh, work site out. And then they will uh, swap places with Steve Smith replacing John Grunsfeld on the end of the robotic arm. John Grunsfeld then becoming the free floating astronaut. And then they'll head uh, basically straight across to the right, about four work bays to uh, bays nine and ten. And those are the first two bays that they will uh, attach what's called NOBLE by its acronym, N-O-B-L, for New Outer Blanket Layer, which is a uh, semi-hard shell layer that uh, matches the same size as the door of the uh, worksite. 
this uh, new insulation blanket uh, will be installed over almost directly over the old insulation blanket which has uh, shown the effects of nine and a half years in space uh, in the harsh space environment with some of the insulation being uh, tearing and peeling and so uh, these new outer blanket layers will be installed first on bays nine and ten and then uh, the flight control team will assess the amount of time remaining to see whether or not there's enough time to do uh, two more bays, which would be five and six. with uh, the Kennedy Space Center area, the Florida Peninsula, getting a fairly good view coming up uh, at uh, 8.05 Eastern time. So just a few minutes from now. Gary Houston, we concur completely. Good recording of it. 
Okay, and there's the man who did OCE, SSAT, and SSR today. That's the man's hand. Can you just pan a little left, please? Why don't you zoom out, too? Okay, we have a good view now. Gary, we have a great view. <laughs> All right, let's go to the airlock. Be careful. Please, to the airlock. Base walking cameraman Steve Smith uh, capturing uh, video of his colleague there, John Grunsfeld, as they uh, complete the servicing task of the Hubble Space Telescope. And now they'll begin the cleanup activities, uh, the final cleanup activities for uh, this servicing mission. Should take about an hour or so. Uh, putting the crew ready to head back inside at about the seven and a half hour point of the spacewalk. Spacewalk now six hours, 31 minutes in duration.